Hello and a warm welcome to the video. Thank you very much indeed for joining it. Today I want to ask a question which some may consider a bit simplistic, even rather naive, and the question is this. Why should this man, Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford, as you see written up in the top right corner of this picture, who was referred to by most of his contemporaries as Earl of Oxford, why should he sign his name Edward Oxenford? What is going on with that extra syllable there. Well, Oxenford, of course, is the old name for Oxford. Maybe he wants to associate himself with Chaucer and people like that who wrote Oxenford. But I'm going to show that there is a deeper reason for what he is doing. Now, a month or two ago, I put up the incalculable genius of John Dee, this video, very gratified to see that in that short time it had over a hundred thousand views. Thank you all very much for showing support and enthusiasm for the work I'm doing. This video talks about John Dee's cryptology and deals quite a bit with the concept of the number of a person's name. This goes right back to the Pythagoreans, the ancient Greeks, and of course the Romans, and the divination that could be derived from turning a name into number. Of course, John Dee was a Christian, and what interested him was finding the number of your name and connecting it to the Trinity. Trinity a bit more complicated for him than it is for others, because he doesn't just see it as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He sees the quaternary concealed within it, and that is the material world, the elements, the four elements. So he himself signs himself with a delta. The delta is the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet, so it conceals a four within a figure which is obviously representing three, namely a triangle, and that four and the three represent the number of his name, John, which is four letters, and D, which is three letters, and the D being the equivalent of the delta. All very clever, all very sophisticated, if you happen to be the sort of man who believes that the Trinity is a threefold, fourfold Trinity, and want to find the number of your name and associate it. Uh, with it. Now, we in that video also, I looked at this man, the Earl of Oxford, who takes the number 1740, because he's called Edward de Vere, that's 12 letters, 1 plus 7 plus 4 plus 0 is 12, and he wants to connect his number to the Trinity, and he does it through T's. Uh, part of the reason I think the T is certainly a holy symbol, a symbol of the cross, Christian symbol. Uh, T is also a symbol of an ox, which I'll come to shortly. Uh, three T's formed into this sacred sign of the Trinity known as the triple tau. And if you look at what is known as the gematric values, that is to say the number of T, it is 19. I'm referring to the Latin Roman alphabet, of course, not the English one, which has things like J in it, so the numbering is different. So three 19s are 57, and 17 plus 40 is 57, so he connects himself to the Trinity in that way, but also to the quaternary that is hidden within it, that fourth T, uh, because four 19s are 76. And if you take the gematric value of Oxford, that is, you look at O, X, F, and all the numbers down below, that comes to 76. So Oxford, therefore, is the equivalent to four Ts. So if Oxford is 4T and 17th Earl of is 17 letters, then we have there a nice, neat pun, 1740, which goes with his name. This was very important to him. I showed on that video this signature and how he conceals within it, or ciphers within it, 1740, with a big 10 in the centre, uh, and or plus 7, which is 17, and then 4 multiplied by 10, which of course is 40. So there's your 1740. And a number of people wrote under the line and said, well, hang on, mate, uh, if he's called Oxford, which you're saying is 1740, the letter T, why on earth is he signing himself Oxenford? Doesn't this rather blow my argument apart? Well, it doesn't, and that's what I'm going to show uh, to you today, having shown the importance with which Oxford treats 1740. I did show that when he chose a pseudonym as well, he decides to start it with a double V, two Vs, two twenties of 40, and then follow it by 17 letters. So he's mirroring 1740 in his pseudonym, and of course referring 
uh, to the spear shaker at Ilium, who was the patron goddess of playwrights, namely Pallas. So I don't want to repeat too much of what I put into the incalculable genius of John Dee. If you think that I've rattled this off a little bit fast and you don't understand it, I would recommend you go back to that video where I take a little bit more time over it. But as I say, what I want to do here is really talk about uh, Edward Oxenford and ask the question, why does he sign his name Oxenford? What is the relevance of it? Just before I go there, let's have a brief reminder of T as the symbol of an ox. I first showed this some time ago in a video looking at the front page of Shakespeare's sonnets where we saw the fourth T, which is down there in this line of 17 letters. So right in the middle of those 17 letters you have 4T. There's your 1740. And note how the T next to the 4 is shaped to look like the ox's horns and the ox's head. Very different from the T right next to it. And this goes right back to the ancient Egyptians whose tau looked like a head of an ox, uh, the constellation of Taurus in the sky. The tau, of course, derives its name from Taurus of the Greek alphabet and of the Roman alphabet. So T is anciently the symbol of an ox's head. And in this particular encryption, he's trying to show you that the T is the Oxford head. So you wake up to this D for T and exchange the D for the T, knowing that it's an ox's head, which gives you Oxford. And then, of course, we have by G, which is God, uh, uh, 17th Earl of Oxford, hidden in that line. But I'm not interested in talking about that at the moment. It is on other videos. Uh, it's just to remind you that the T is the symbol of an ox. So back to ox and ford, let's try to unpack it a little bit. So the gematric value of Oxford is 76, to which he has added the syllable n. If we look at the gematric table, n is 13. So if you add 13 to 76, we come to 89. And if you add 8 and 9, you get to 17, sort of root number if you like. If we look at it this way, oxen 4D, then obviously 4 oxen is 4 Ts, since that uh, T is the sign of an ox. So there we have 17, 4 Ts straight away. And the D, as I've just shown you with John D, is the ultimate symbol of the quaternary that is concealed within the ternary. It is the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet. It is delta, and that's how D signed himself off, as I just said, uh, Dicit litera quarta, Seth the fourth letter, and he signed himself with a delta symbolizing, as I say, the key to all of this, which is the, uh, the, the quaternary that is concealed within the ternary. Okay, now let's start walking backwards through the name Oxenford. So we've got the D, which is the delta, with the big triangle, and then next to that, four, which is the number four. Next to that, N. We look down at the chart there. N is the 13th letter of the Roman Latin alphabet. 13 plus 4 is, of course, 17. Uh, that leaves us with ox. Old-fashioned spelling of ox had an E on it. And if we look at the gematric values down at the bottom, O is 14, X is 21, E is 5. 14 plus 21 plus 5 is 40. So there you have your 1740 hidden in Oxenford. But all things come in threes, as we know. There's the three and then the concealed fourth part. So let's try and find the third one. We divide Oxenford into its three syllables. And then we have ox then, of course, at the beginning, sign T. At the end, we have D, which is the fourth letter. And then the spelling out of the letter N, uh, N being the 13th letter of the alphabet, and then 4, as we've seen. 13 plus 4 is 17, so there you have your third way, which is 17, 40. So he's doing exactly what one would expect him to do, is find uh, three ways of doing it. Everything in threes is perfect, according to these people, but then the quaternary that is hidden, well, we saw that, didn't we, in the numbering on the signature. So you've got your three uh, hidden in Oxenford, 
and then you've got your 1740 which links Edward to Oxenford very cleverly uh, with the number 10 and the multiplications that I showed you at the beginning. So very, very symbolic of the 3 plus 1, the quaternary that is concealed within the ternary. And I hope that now answers the question as to why he chose for preference Oxenford and not Oxford, which simply gives you 4T, doesn't get you the 1740 unless you write 17th Earl of Oxford. And that's why he chose Oxenford. So we see how 1740 is so much the key that opens the door to everything about Oxford as Shakespeare. If we look at the three famous monuments, the one at Wilton House, the one at Stratford-upon-Avon, and the one in London, Westminster Abbey, we note 1740 is a crucial part of understanding each of them. The London Monument, of course, was erected in 1740, and if you look closely to the scroll, you see what appears to be the shape of a Masonic square with the E knocked out of tower so that you have 17 letters along the top and four Ts down the left-hand side. A very similar thing seems to be going on in the Stratford Monument, Stratford-upon-Avon. If you look at the bottom right, again, a Masonic square with four Ts and 17 characters just below. The Wilton Monument, very slightly different, but again, 1740 is absolutely key to it. He's pointing at the initials E-O, that's Edward Oxenford, Edward Oxford, and the letters R, W, R is the 17th letter, and double V, as it's written there, is 220s, which is 40. So you have 1740, EO, Edward Oxenford. Of course, one of the most extraordinary aspects of this is the locations of where these three monuments with their 1740 encryptions can be found. If we look at a map of England and join London to Stratford-upon-Avon, down to Wilton and back to London, we find ourselves with a perfect equilateral triangle. That is the delta, the great sign of the quaternary hidden within the ternary that de-encrypts all of this stuff. And as one might expect, right in the centre of that delta, we find Oxford. Oxford, 76 Ingematria, the same as four T's. The fourth T is lurking there, the great county of Oxford takes up the main part of the centre of that triangle. And that is telling us that Oxford 4T is what actually connects these three monuments to William Shakespeare, connects them through the, the triple tower, this idea of the, the three T's, the three oxes with the fourth T concealed within the centre of it that represents Edward de Vere, Earl of Oxford. And I hope that this helps to make sense of that uh, long known about puzzle discovered by John Rollett many years ago, the dedication to the sonnets first published in 1609, Shakespeare's sonnets, made out as three triangles in six lines, two lines and four lines in length. And it was Rollett who realised that if you count the words in the order 624 as demarcated by the dots and hyphens, you get the message, these sonnets all by Evia, the fourth T. So we now understand clearly what is meant by the fourth T, uh, why he chose to sign his name Oxenford, and what all of this is about, and opens the door, I think, to an absolute certainty now uh, that he was the man who owned the name William Shakespeare. I'm sure there's a bit more to it than that, and we will go into it in future videos. Please press the subscribe button and the bell so that you will be warned when any new material comes online and you'll be able to watch it the day it arrives. Thank you all so much for being part of this great adventure.